Living in a modern age of the internet, we live by the motto that if something is online, it usually stays there. But the truth is, is that our creations are bound sooner or later to be casted into obscurity and forgotten. Even in the age of the internet, we can already see this effect taking place. The things we used to enjoy and hold dear to us just a few years ago are slowly being discarded, and unless we put in effort to archive, record, and catalog them, they too will suffer the same fate. But there are always exceptions to the rule. A piece of media that had been previously forgotten seemingly just surfaces out of nowhere, astonishing internet historians and archivers alike with its unknown origins and ushering in a new internet-wide mystery that would take us across a decade-long search. This piece of lost, now recovered media would come to be known as the most mysterious song on the internet. It's the kind of music mystery that only the best music historian might be able to solve. A handful of songs were recorded to a cassette tape back in the mid-1980s, maybe early 1990s. But there's no record of who was performing those songs, who recorded them, even what those songs were called. Recorded at 82 to 84 from a German radio station. Looking for singer since then. Sounds like statues in motion, or metro decay. Hey Juga, you're talking about Greek bands, right? I can't find any useful information about them, and no songs to listen to. Can you help me out with further information? Helping out with further information he didn't, but this innocent 2007 post made on the spirit of radio.ca a CFNY fan site of a Canadian radio station more commonly known now as 102.1 Edge asking for information about a song recorded all the way back in the mid 80s would start one of the most interesting scavenger hunts in internet history. While the first official post was made over a decade ago, the actual search began way, way earlier. The date is 1984, location Wilhelmshaven, Germany. A 14-year-old boy named Darius records an unidentified post-punk song in its entirety in a mono format on his Technics Hi-Fi Jacket System K6 as part of his collection for his favorite unknown radio hits that Darius would turn into a playlist he called Unknown Pleasures, a reference to the Joy Division album of the same name. The source of the broadcast was an unknown German radio station. And jump forward. The year is 04. And Darius, as an effort to archive his old playlist, would digitize his old Unknown Pleasures cassette. As a byproduct of this, he rediscovers this unknown song. And at this point, Darius, with the help of his sister Lydia, would begin their search for the song that was recorded nearly two decades prior. By 07, Lydia would take more of a leading role by posting the song across the internet looking for any help or leads. Bringing us all the way back to this original post. 
but for the next 10 years, Lydia's efforts would remain futile. And Lydia would give up on her search. The song would slowly unroll across the web. For the next 10 years, word would slowly spread around. People would come across some of Lydia's many old posts. They would share it to their friends, asking if they perhaps recognize it. One of these friendly inquiries would just so happen to reach a student named Gabriel, who unlike all the previous people who came across the song, he would take special intrigue in the mystery after being informed about this song by a friend who happens to be connected with the Spanish independent record label Dead Wax Records. After many failed search attempts, Gabriel uploads a song to his YouTube channel, titling the video The Most Mysterious Song on the Internet. The title of the video would be the first use of the now famous name coined for the unknown song. He then proceeds to create 44 posts about the song on 27 subreddits, hoping to spread the word. And the rest is history. At this point, many music journalists, redditors, and internet users were on a chase, and their main lead was the radio station. Old posts from Lydia that were discovered on a German music forum claimed the song was most likely played on the NDR show on a segment called Music for Young People. These found posts also allude that Lydia is from Bremen and her home radio station is Bremen 4. Further investigation by the community shows that the Music for Young People segment had a presenter by the name of Paul Baskerville who likely broadcasted the song between 1982 and 84. Not just that, but old interviews with Paul revealed that he routinely played indie records on his show that he would get from local vinyl stores, meaning the song would most likely have been publicly released on vinyl. Paul would be contacted by the searching community and informed on the search. He promises that he would help out and that he would play the song on radio to see if anyone else recognizes it. A bunch of false leads later, and Paul would go live on a German radio station where he's interviewed on a song, and the song would be played again, hoping for it to fall on knowledgeable ears. Around 1.15 p.m., Darius returns home from work, decides to listen to Radio Ain's broadcast, and is astonished to hear the song he recorded nearly three decades ago, playing live on air. Darius would then find out about this internet-wide search and would contact Lydia who would begin her search again. She would create a Reddit account by the name of Bluely in order to maintain contact with the community. After this, months would pass with no luck. During this time, many fakes, false leads, pretenders, and hoaxes would pop up. Some of the most notable is Ronnie Urini, an Austrian musician who claimed he wrote the song in collaboration with Christian Brandy at the end of 1983. Christian was a member of the Austrian band Schuspe that became famous in the Austrian music scene. At first, this seemed like a legit discovery, but hopes quickly lowered after Ronnie failed to provide any concrete evidence no alternate recording, no demo, no master tape, and no authentic documentation from 1983. He also does not explain how the song ended up on NDR. Ronnie is also known to claim authorship of songs he didn't make, or claim collaborations with people that he never collabed with, including people who were long dead when the song was made. Another pretender is Eris Avgerino, a bassist of the 80s Greek synth rock band Blue Light. He claims the song was an early collaboration between the band Blue Light, Villa 21, and The Mushrooms. 
Aries states that there were actually four versions of the song, four demos of which the version that was played on NDR was just one. According to him, the song is called Excommunication. He uh, backed it up by uploading a supposed alternate version of the song, an instrumental. But to be fair, the tape he provided is unconvincing. It sounds more like an edited version that had its vocals cut out than anything original. Oh, and there's also Randall Turner, a mentally unstable man who claims to have made the song and also every pop song ever. But perhaps the most well-known and controversial contender is a Greek new wave band called Statues in Motion. This group was formed in summer of 81 and released one self-titled EP in 1983. They were a promising young band made of four members, Billy Knight, Alvin Dean, Giannis Popocostas, and Ellie Kane. They had a record contract with the 3X, a Greek record label distributor. Unfortunately, by the time the 1983 album hit shelves, the band itself had actually split up and scattered across Europe. According to keyboardist Billy Knight, this stemmed from the record label dragging on the release of the album for over a year, which Knight attributes to putting a strain on the band members who all decided to move on to other things. Billy Knight himself would move to England, and it was only after he had arrived there that he heard the album had finally been released. Meanwhile, Alvin Dean, the Greek-Australian singer, apparently moved to Germany or back to Australia according to different sources, and he kinda just disappeared off the face of the earth. What is interesting about Statues in Motion is that they came into the community's attention in the last two years, but they are in no way a new lead, because Statues in Motion were the first band that Druga would tell Lydia about in his 2007 comment reply on spiritofradio.ca. See, the only reason Druga made the assumption back then is because the lead singer on Like the Wind sounds strangely similar to Statues in Motion's main singer Alvin Dean. This connection was initially ruled out when Billy Knight was contacted by a Reddit user in 2019 asking whether Statues in Motion created the mysterious song, of which Billy Knight would reply, no. But sometime later, in January of 2020, a Facebook user would post a link of the most mysterious song on Statues of Motion's main Facebook page asking if the song was made by them in which Billy Knight would go back on his words and say, quote, How did you come across it? Ten months would go by without a reply from Knight. Eventually, in November of 2020, a user asked, Was it so difficult to get a yes or no answer? Of which Statues in Motion, or Billy Knight himself, answered with a simple yes. So, Billy Knight, who initially rejected the song, is now claiming it as his own. Billy then goes ahead and does an interview where he went more into detail of how the song came to be. Billy claims that the song was actually a part of five songs that were cut from the Statues in Motion album because they simply did not have enough room on the record for them. He says the reason he initially denied knowing of the song when he was first sent it 
was because he simply did not listen to it. He had no expectation that his half-forgotten, unused song would ever reach the public. Being sent links of it repeatedly, he figured he'll better check what the fuss was about, and then was surprised to discover it was one of his. See, Knight believes Alvin Dean, the lead singer, took the tapes of the unused song with him to Berlin and perhaps through a friend of a friend, a copy found its way to Paul Baskerville or another DJ on NDR. Until now, everything sounds great. But when examining the claims a little bit further, some notable red flags arise. See, while the main singer of Statues in Motion does sound pretty similar to the one on Like the Wind, the rest of the song on Statues in Motion don't really sound anything like it. Particularly the heavy use of the guitar, which is something that is missing in the rest of the songs being synth heavy, and the use of a real drum set on the mysterious song when the band used a drum machine throughout the album. But perhaps the most problematic inconsistency is the synth used in the song. In the interview with Conspiracy, Billy Knight mentions that the song, along with the rest of the album, was recorded in 1982. This puts it two years before the launch of the Yamaha DX7, the exact synth that is used in the most mysterious song. Knight in fact states that he played the Yamaha SK10 and TS15 which aligns with the time period, but those are older analog subtractive synthesizers that are quite different to the digital DX7. It's not possible that he could get the SK10 or the CS15 to sound like the DX7. The chances that Knight could get the exact sound is extremely low. He obviously couldn't have tried emulating it, because in 1982, it simply did not exist yet. So what? He arrived at it by accident? It's just not very possible. Also, the synth sound cannot be found anywhere else in any other of their songs throughout the whole album. And unfortunately, most of the remaining members of Statues in Motion have sadly passed away since the 80s. The one person who would be able to confirm or deny Billy Knight's claims and possibly even solve the whole mystery is Alvin Dean himself, but his whereabouts, as it turns out, are a mystery in their own right. Knight and the rest of the band lost contact with Dean after he left for Germany. He doesn't appear to be on social media. There are rumors that he moved to Australia, or that he even died of a drug overdose in the 80s, but none of this has been confirmed. It's of course possible that Knight is remembering it correctly. Maybe Alvin Dean, after moving away, remade the song in 1983, and perhaps Billy Knight remembers an older version of the song that used different instruments. It's totally possible that Alvin Dean re-recorded the old song with a new group in a studio with a DX7 and a real drum kit. But until Alvin Dean himself is found, this will remain a dead lead. Which brings us to the modern day. So, what do I think about the song and the search? It is entirely possible that the song is just sitting somewhere on YouTube, with all the information we need right in the description, because throughout this search, many other unknown and undiscovered songs that were either recorded on the initial tape or others have all been found uploaded to YouTube, no matter how obscure. So we know that even the most obscure songs are probably somewhere on YouTube. It's also possible that one of the many false or hoaxes that the community has denied are in fact true. The song is very old and having a musician's claims be denied simply because they don't have a good enough piece of proof, or perhaps they don't fully remember things correctly that happened three decades ago, is simply unfair. So it is possible 
that one of the many that claim the song is their own is in fact telling the truth. Another possibility is that this was actually a Statues in Motion song or at least an Alvin Dean song because that is still, to this day, the closest sounding vocals that we know of. But I also believe that it is only a matter of time that eventually the song will fall on the right set of ears. There are literally billions of people out there that have simply not heard of it yet and it is simply a numbers game until one of the few that would recognize it does. This is a truly fascinating mystery because it's not your conventional lost media case. The media itself in your situation is very much found, but rather it is the origins of the media that is lost. There are endless possibilities of where or how this song came to be and even how it happened to be played on a German radio station. Was it a demo tape? A one-off copy? I guess only time will tell. Researching this mystery felt like diving headfirst into a rabbit hole with no end in sight, but I loved every second of it, as Lost Media is and will always be one of my favorite topics to research, learn, and talk about. If you know any mysteries that you think are intriguing enough to cover on this channel, you can let me know about them by joining our Discord server that is in the description below. Down there you will also find all my socials that you can follow me on if you'd like. Thank you for being here and watching, subscribe to stay updated and comment below your thoughts. And I will see you all very soon.